Day minus one, Friday, June twenty second. The team wild boars gathered together after practice. Tomorrow is my birthday. Let's go to Tham Luang for a while. But nobody tell their parents, otherwise we won't be allowed. Tham Luang, or the Great Cave of the Sleeping Lady, is a twisting and turning six-mile complex of narrow passages through layers of ancient limestone. Located at Mai Sai, a sleepy town along Thailand's border with Myanmar and Laos, known also as the Golden Triangle, an area used mainly by opium drug runners. Buried in its hills is its one and only entrance. Day one, Saturday, June twenty-third. Peerput Sompanjai's father was the first one up early that morning. Happy birthday, night! The whole family will be here to celebrate your sixteenth birthday after you return from football practice. Thanks, Dad. Can't tell him. I'll be a little late from Tham Luang. As the boys ate their lunch after practice. Hey, Coach Ek, we want to go for a quick trip inside the caves. It's my birthday. One hour only. Might rain today. Coach Ek, a member of the Shan minority from Myanmar, loved the boys as his own. An orphan from the age of ten, after which he became a monk, the boys were like his family. They cycled to the caves, parked their bikes, dropped off their backpacks, and disappeared inside. Little did they know that this would be the longest hour of their life. When Peerput Sopanjai's entire family had gathered around his house in rural Vien Hom, it began to rain heavily. Meanwhile, the boys were having a fun time, oblivious to the rain outside. The water started to fill in. Move to high ground, quick! Scrambling to safety on an elevated area known as Pattaya Beach. Unknown to them, they were four miles deep inside the cave complex. Meanwhile, the family waited for the birthday boy. He must be delayed because of the heavy rains. Wait a while. But as night fell, and yet no news of him. Has Nick returned from football? No, night isn't back either. Something was wrong, very wrong. Word spread that the boys and the coach had gone to Tham Luang after practice. The parents rushed there. See, all thirteen bikes are at the entrance. They waited for the water to recede. Don't worry, it will clear soon. As it began getting late in the night, the kids were thinking of only one thing. My mom is going to kill me when she finds out. Day two, Sunday, June twenty-fourth. Nargong Sak or Satan Nargong, governor of Chiang Rai Province, did not waste any time. Empty the cave of water. Bring in the pumps. Placing big blue nylon pipes in the flooded areas, generators began pumping out water at over 1.2 million or 120 lakh liters an hour in a frantic effort to clear the pathway. By morning, Thai Navy SEALs were called in, and rotating teams of six divers dived day and night trying to find the missing boys. But the force of the water currents ripped off their diving masks. Something needs to be done to reduce the water currents. Inside, the water the boys were carrying in flasks was over. I'm thirsty. You can't drink this water. It's muddy. See that water dripping from those stalactites? Stand under them and drink. That's pure water. The last meal the boys had eaten was before entering the caves. Now their stomachs were growling. Here. There's a little food I happen to be carrying. Coach Ek, what about you? For going his share, being a monk, Coach Ek was used to fasting. He now put his knowledge to good use. I will now lead you in a series of breathing exercises. These breathing techniques will help you conserve energy. Day three, Monday, June twenty-fifth. News of the children trapped in caves spread all across the world. One thousand five hundred journalists poured in. U.S. Air Force deployed a survival specialist and a light ops unit. French, British, Australian divers came. Buddhist monks began coming every evening, leading the parents in prayer, who refused to leave the mouth of the cave until their sons came out, sleeping on cots and plastic chairs. Shamans from nearby villages came to pray and offered live animal sacrifices. A local massage school sent their students to give free massages to the tired parents and military. Soon, a small tent city sprang up in the mud, cooking curry, noodles, and selling energy drinks. Inside, food had run out, but the boys battled the odds. Just be patient. Your parents will find us. We can survive without food for months, but not without water. And we have water. Nothing will happen. Meditate, pray. 
weekdays 4 to 9, June 26 to 30th and July 1st. Geologists use electrical resistivity techniques and mapping experts interpreted the data by creating 3D maps to find sinkholes where above ground streams stopped and went underground, adding more water to the caves. Now I know why despite pumping out millions of gallons of water, the levels never dropped. They then constructed dams to divert water flow into nearby paddy fields where farmers readily accepted loss of their crop. We will do anything to serve the boys. But they still faced great difficulty in their search operations until a cave detail map surveyed by the French in 1987 was sent to the rescue team. The efforts paid off and despite ongoing rains, water levels dropped. The divers could finally begin their quest without interference from the conditions. Soon, what's this? Footprints, handprints of the children. Looks like they've been here. Much deeper in the cave than anticipated. We need to go further. They reached a junction where one side went left and the other right. There was only one way to go. Upwards, the path going up is where they would have gone. Kochek continued to train the boys on how to conserve energy by restricting movement and meditating, which helped the boys fight hunger. Outside, teams began combing the mountainside looking for other openings into the cave complex. Expert climbers from Libong Island, who scale cliffs to find edible birds' nests, a delicacy in Asia, use their generations-old skills searching for openings. We can't find any other entrances. We've covered the west side completely. Day 10, July 2nd, Monday, late at night. A pair of British divers, Richard Stanton and John Wallington, were at the end of their line. The rope that stretches to base camp, so they can find their way back. As they were turning to leave, Jason, as was his habit, sniffed the air. I smell people. Before he saw them, he knew they were there. Look, there they are. Four miles away from the entrance, huddled on a rocky shelf they sat. How many of you? Replies the only boy, Adul, who speaks English. Thirteen. Soon the boys got their first meal in days. High protein liquid food, high calorie gels, painkillers, antibiotics and emergency foil blankets. Day 11, July 3rd, Tuesday. By the time the world woke up, headlines screamed. Wanting to let their loved ones know they were well, we have written a letter to our parents. Can you give it to them? Don't worry. I just disappeared for two weeks. I love dad and mom. Don't worry about me. I'm safe. Don't I take care of myself. I want to go to Mugata when I come out. Kochek, who had no family of his own, wrote an open letter of apology to the parents. To all the boys' families. I apologize for putting your sons in danger. Please forgive me. I promise I will take care of the kids as best as I can. Day 12, July 4th, Wednesday. A team of Thai Navy SEAL divers plus a medic and counsellor joined the boys. It took us six hours from the mouth of the cave to reach you. Dr. Pak Lohanshun, the doctor diver, earned instant fame in Thailand when the Thai Navy shared a video of him inside the cave treating the boys' wounds. He stayed with them for several nights and was the last one to leave the cave. I need you to be strong and healthy in case you need to be here for some time or we decide to swim out. Outside, it was still raining and the forecast was bad. Sir, there may be more flash floods and the caves may fill again. That would put them back on square one. Despite removing over 30 million gallons of water, there was still too much of it left inside. If that happens, the boys may have to remain inside till the end of the monsoon season. Soon, even that would not be an option. As more and more people began staying with the boys, the oxygen trapped in the cave began to deplete. 15% is too dangerous. The safe zone is 21%. Visibility was in inches and the water was a freezing 18 degrees centigrade. But there were no choices left. We can't stay here much longer. We have to swim and dive out. Day 13, July 5th, Thursday. Outside, all sorts of plans were being discussed. Even the option of laying an oxygen pipe to replenish air inside the cave. Meanwhile, the evacuation team began planning. A rope line had already been placed along the pathway. Here and here on the tough beds. To swim out, the kids would need to dive underwater, then swim up a narrow passage, reach a sharp U-turn, which had almost no ledge, and then repeat. 
choke point was barely two feet wide and divers had to squeeze past it one at a time. Retired Navy SEAL diver Samaran Kunan, 38, volunteered to place oxygen cylinders along the evacuation path as a safeguard against a diver's tank getting damaged during the rescue attempt. Inside, Gocek began preparing the boys and keeping them in a positive frame of mind. Think of the first thing you will do when you get out. Initially criticized for letting the boys enter the cave, he has since been credited for their survival. We are happy Coach Ek is in there with the boys. He will take care of them. The parents jointly replied to Coach Ek's letter of apology. Please, don't blame yourself. They also assured their sons, don't worry, we will not scold you when you come out. Day 14, July 6, Friday. Thai Navy SEAL Saman Kunan had already been underwater for some time. This curve is tight. I need to put the tank at the right place. Finding the right place was difficult in the narrow passage. If I place it there, it could hit someone's head. If I put it here, it may be too deep to reach. The deeper he went to find the right spot, the faster oxygen drained from his tank. As he fixed the last cylinder, his head began to feel light. Ne need to get hair now. But he was too late and became the only fatality in this otherwise spotless rescue mission. Day 15, Saturday, July 7. Shaken by the death, Ostanakon played for time. The boys are too weak to die. A concerted effort was being made to dig into the cave. By day 15, more than 400 exploratory holes had been drilled, some over 1,000 feet deep. Unfortunately, the inside of the cave mimicked the surface terrain. Where the ground sloped down, inside, the cave also went downwards. After an accident occurred when a rescue vehicle skidded off a dirt track, seriously injuring six people, the effort was called off. The decision was made to swim the boys out. But none of them knew swimming, let alone how to dive. Boys, they have to put you all to sleep so you don't panic underwater. We need you all to agree. Each of you will have three divers swimming alongside, while we have other divers stationed along the way. We are all professional divers who have come from all around the world to help you get out. You have to trust us. Day 16, Sunday, July 8th. Ostanakon confidently informed the world of the daring escape plan, but even he knew there lay great risk. Today is D-Day. After having rehearsed the rescue operation for several days, 13 international divers and 5 Thai SEALs set out on their mission. Inside, the boys were deciding on an even bigger issue. Which four should go out first? Maybe those that know how to swim the best, the strongest and healthiest. After thinking for a while, they made their decision. Those that live the furthest should go first. They were sedated and quickly fell into a deep sleep. None of them will ever remember their dramatic journey out of the cave. Breathing through an oxygen mask with a float around their necks, they were wrapped up like yoga mats with handles. The oxygen cylinder was carried by a diver buddy assigned to each boy, almost hugging him right through. British divers Rick Stanton, Jason Mallinson were very tense for the first 5-10 to 10 minutes. As long as I can see air bubbles, I know he's still breathing. A SEAL command center was set up about 300 meters before the mouth of the entrance called Chamber 3. It took the first four boys four hours to reach Chamber 3. News filtered out. They are out, all safe. Outside, everyone exploded in joy. Meanwhile, the boys rested and were medically examined. Do you feel strong enough to walk out? Yes. You can see the boys coming now. They will be evacuated by chopper to Chian Rai Prachanukuruk Hospital. We turn to one of the parents. Why are you not being allowed to meet your son? They are weak and should not catch any infection from us. At the hospital, an entire floor had been evacuated for the boys. We have to check them for possible lung infection from bat and bird droppings or caver's disease. And hypothermia, extremely low body temperature caused by prolonged exposure to water. Day 17 and 18, Monday, Tuesday, July 9th and 10th. After a day of rest, the divers returned to bring four more boys and a day later, the last four and coach egg. Finally, three Navy SEALs and the doctor came out last. The boys who had lost two kilos each were first given semi-solid and easy to digest foods like bread, diluted porridge and some chocolate. 
Parents of the boys had to wear protective suits and stand two meters away as a precaution. Even while in hospital, the boys paid tribute to the fallen diver Samaran Kunal, who died trying to save them. The family had to suffer because of us. They would later spend 11 days as monks to honor the diver's memory. For his widow, he was, You're a hero in my heart. Meanwhile, the divers who saved the boys have gone back to their lives. Chris Jewell is an IT consultant in England. I just have the skills which helped. I'm no hero. There have been other rescues as dramatic as this one, like the one in Chile in 2010, when 33 coal miners were rescued from 600 meters underground after being trapped for 69 days. A rescue shaft was created and a capsule lowered to bring out the miners. Peru in 2012. Nine miners were evacuated from 250 meters down after rescuers dug through rock and soil. France, 1999, seven rescued after 10 days being trapped in a cave due to flooding, similar to the Thai rescue. That time they drilled multiple shafts into the rock. Within a month, the boys will be back to their football. Meet the accidental heroes. Ekarat Wangshuk Chan, 14, aka Bu, goalie. Natawut Takamrong, 14, aka Turn, Defender. Adul Samon, 14, Speaks English, Defender. Ponchai Kamnoang, 16, aka T, Defender. Panuma Sangdi, 13, aka Big, Defender. Prajak Sutan, 14, aka Note, Midfielder. Mongkol Buniam, 13, aka Mark, Midfielder. Pipat Po, 15, aka Nick, Midfielder. Sompong Jai Wong, 13, aka Pong. Left winger, Pirpat Sompanjai, 16, aka Knight, right winger, Chani Vibulrum Gruang, 11, aka Titan, forward, Dugan Pet Promtep, 13, aka Dom, captain and striker, Ikapol Chantawang, Gochek, 25. This bows Limerick. Everyone was trapped emotionally along with the boys, who nine days without food showed unbelievable poise. They sat on a slope but never gave up hope until a daring rescue filled their world again with joys. Subscribe to Bizbo's channel and be sure to click on the bell icon. Be the first to know when Bizbo releases a new video.